Hey there, I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain the meaning of the word input impedance. Impedance means to restrict, inhibit or stop something happening. In electrical circuits that means the restriction of current flow. The circuit I'm going to use to demonstrate this is a very simple one. It's a power supply, a resistor and a capacitor. A capacitor is nothing more or less than two metal plates separated by something called a dielectric. The dielectric is an insulator and therefore no current can flow through a capacitor. Any current flowing through a circuit that contains a capacitor is down to the charging and discharging of the plates of the capacitor itself. In the graphic we have before us we note a power supply when the power supply is switched on, at this point, the capacitor begins to charge very rapidly. We see the voltage across the capacitor in the graph here. The charge is very rapid first of all, and then slows down, until the capacitor is fully charged. What we mean by that is the capacitor has reached the same potential as the supply voltage. When this happens in the DC circuit, no further current will flow. The situation however changes if we try to measure that voltage across the capacitor using something like an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has an input impedance much like the capacitor but because no current flows in the capacitor we say its input impedance is infinite whereas the input impedance or resistance of an oscilloscope is usually for a standard scope about 1 million ohms, 1 mega ohm. What this means is that the oscilloscope allows a small amount of current to flow through it. In other words, it bypasses the capacitor. Just a little bit of that current bypasses the capacitor. And that current, therefore, causes a volt drop across the resistor in the circuit. We say that the oscilloscope loads the circuit. It introduces a small measurement error because of its input impedance. Generally speaking, for instruments that are going to measure voltage or voltage waveforms, we like them to have a high input impedance. And for instruments that are going to measure current, a low input impedance. The oscilloscope and resistor form a voltage divider, which I'm going to draw extremely badly here. The voltage dropped across the oscilloscope V1 is dependent upon the value of the resistance in the circuit. But both V1 and V2 always equal the supply voltage. For our circuit we can work out what the loading of the oscilloscope is going to be by carrying out this sum here. We take the resistance divided by the resistance plus the oscilloscope resistance and multiply that by the supply voltage and that will give us the amount of voltage dropped across the resistor. We will do that in a calculator. The resistance in this circuit is 100,000 ohms and that will be divided by 1 million which is the input resistance or impedance of the oscilloscope plus 100,000 and we get this and then if we multiply that by 5 which is our supply voltage that will give us the amount of difference between the two voltages. So we're going to drop 0.45 volts across the resistor and the remaining voltage will be dropped across the capacitor. Let's switch the circuit on then. I've got the oscilloscope set up in such a way that the volts per division, each square division, represents 1 volt, the power supply is 5 volts, so if theory was correct, our final voltage at the top here, once the capacitor is fully charged, should read 5 volts, but we will see that it doesn't quite reach 5 volts because of the input impedance of the oscilloscope.
hit the stop button, adjust the cursor as required. So we measure the voltage at ground and how high it gets, just touching the peak there. And the voltage measured is the change in Y, change in the Y dimension. And we measure 4.56 volts. 